Filming in the dark is probably not a good idea. It's papaya. My contortion coach told me that papaya tastes like bile. And now papaya is forever ruined for everybody. It's been a while since I vlogged. How you doing? I'm doing good, thanks for asking. You're like, Sarah, where the hell have you been? That's a good question. So I took some time off of YouTube vlogging. I used to be very regular with it. The reason why I took time off from vlogging was so I could take... Did you see that? Could spend time learning, expanding my repertoire, being my own guinea pig and creating new content. I spent the past couple of years creating a lot of new programs because I have undergone quite a transformation myself and I want to obviously follow my passions and teach my passions. So I spent all of this time creating my Strength Academy, which is an online mentorship monthly membership program. And I've also created separate programs because I know not everybody wants to join the academy. Not everybody wants that kind of a commitment. Oh, commitment. Oh. So I've been a busy bee. I've put together a Nali Kriya program, a backbending for beginners program, and a splits program. And right now I'm currently working on a pelvic floor and core program that will be launching in the new year. So it's not like I've been like, you know, picking my arse for the past two years. I've just been, you know, up to my cha-chas and busy work. So here I am, I'm back and I'm excited. So the other day I had to go to the hospital because I was having severe abdominal pain and they thought it was my appendix and I had a CT scan and it turned out I have uncomplicated diverticulitis, which is hereditary. My grandmother, my mother, my sister have it. I have a very high fiber diet and a very healthy lifestyle. So it's bizarre that I got it, but shit happens. I finished the course of antibiotics which were used to treat it. Unfortunately antibiotics do impact negatively the gut microbiome. It kills off not only the bad bacteria but also the good bacteria. This may be obvious or maybe it's not but if you are on antibiotics you need to time when you take your probiotics because they have opposing effects. Anti Pro. So I wait at least three hours after consuming an antibiotic before I would have a probiotic. Probiotics, perhaps you've taken them in supplement format, which I am doing, especially having been on antibiotics. I can show you what I'm taking. They're little sachets that I mix with water and it tastes like ass. We can also find these beneficial live bacteria in foods. Kefir, it's a fermented probiotic milk drink. In fact, it's a better source of good bacteria than yogurt. And it's generally well tolerated by people who are lactose intolerant. I happen to be one of those people and I'm totally fine with kefir. One thing that's helpful for preventing constipation is drinking lots of water, especially if you do have a higher fiber diet like I do. The other thing that's really helped me stay regular is doing Nali Kriya every morning, except when I have my period. And this stokes the digestive fire. It literally makes me go poop. And if you wanna learn how to do Nali Kriya, alien yoga, I created an entire program that teaches you how to do this. You can find it on my website. I can put the link below. Prebiotics. These promote an increase in the friendly bacteria in the gut. So you may have taken these in supplement format or via foods. Let's talk about both. Because I was on antibiotics, I'm using a supplement right now. This is a tea, actually. Slippery Elm Prebiotic Formula. Can you see it? And I'm gonna show you the foods that I've been eating that are loaded with prebiotic fiber. It's basically just a type of dietary fiber that feeds the good gut bacteria. And this allows these good bacteria to produce nutrients that feed the colon cells. And this promotes healthy digestion. Zaloni banana, unripe green bananas. These are high in resistant starch, which has prebiotic effects. Who knew? School ya. Apples have pectin, which is a type of soluble fiber that has prebiotic effects. What's your favorite kind of apple? Right now, I'm going through a golden delicious phase. 
flaxseed meal contains prebiotics that promote healthy get, get promotes healthy gut bacteria and it also encourages bowel movements. I'm not sponsored by Longos, but goddamn do I wish. Dark chocolate over 70%, ideally 85% if you can handle it. This has prebiotic effects loaded with prebiotic fiber. Persimmons Actually, these suckers have a lot of fiber. One persimmon is about 118 calories and has six grams of fiber. This is a hachia. This is a fuyu. Fu, fuyu, fuyu. This one looks like a heart and this one looks like a tomato. I don't like these ones so much because they have to sit on the counter for like forever in a dick for them to get really ripe. If you eat an unripe hachia persimmon, oh God help you. These are loaded with tannins. These ones, are astringent. It will dry the shit out of everything in your mouth. Your teeth will feel dry, all of your oral mucosa, your tongue. It's like torture. It creates like this puckering, bitter feeling like you've eaten like a whole bag of chalk. Who wants one? Fu Yu is my favorite because they have non-astringent tannins. So you can eat these suckers even when they're unripe and it won't torture you. It's delicious. Fu Yu ones are hard. The hachia ones, when they're ripe, are like jelly. These are my favorite food in the whole entire world. And they're only available between November and January in Toronto. If you live in Toronto and you're trying to find persimmons, I'm sorry, they're all gone. I bought them all. What else did I buy? Hummus, colorful cherry tomatoes, papaya, panda licorice, which contains molasses, which actually makes you go poo, whole grain melba toast, who likes this? Chocolate almond milk. Yeah, that's right, chocolate, but it's non-sucré. It's unsweetened. Sometimes I'll just open the fridge and just drink it right out of the carton. That was fun. Do me a favor and comment below your favorite pre and probiotic foods. That way we can get a good list going and we can help each other out. Who got all the toys out? Was it you? Or was it you? I know a lot of you follow me because you're inspired by the transformation I have undergone in the past five years. And it's not just a movement transformation. When the body levels up, the mind inevitably levels up with it. So I thought for my very first vlog back, a really cool topic and an appropriate one would be the topic of transformation. The first step to a transformation, in my opinion, is taking ownership for your current situation. It takes courage to call yourself out and say, I did this shit to myself. But you know what takes even more courage? Making changes. Most people don't have the guts to make changes. And why is that? It's because it's hard for us to step towards the unfamiliar. We feel more comfortable with the familiarity of our comfort zone. And that's why I forced myself to do crazy things, such as signing up for an online pole dance school in Belarus. This is way outside of my comfort zone. The curriculum is entirely in Russian and I have to submit homework for review. And I'm not gonna lie, the curriculum is more than 4% outside of my current skill set. I am purposely doing this, forcing myself to step outside my comfort zone. And yeah, it makes me piss out my ass a little bit. But if I didn't do this, I wouldn't improve as a dancer, nor would my Russian improve. Dobro pejalovat na moy kanal, menye zavut sara. Ya gavaru chuchut pa ruski. My accent ujasen. I have not finished it. In case you're wondering, I was born and raised in Canada, but I'm fourth generation Russian and Romanian. That's why I look a little bit like a vampire sometimes, maybe. So here's my question for you. What are you doing to make yourself piss out your ass a little bit? Just choot-choot. How long does it take to transform? As long as it takes, probably longer. You have to stay in the cocoon long enough in order to become the butterfly. You have to embrace the space between who you currently are and who you're becoming. Okay, this is important. You have to be willing to suck at new things, which is normal. You're not supposed to be good at things you've never done before. 
I always tell people in my strength academy not to judge themselves doing an exercise until they've done it at least 300 times. When you can embrace the fact that you're going to suck at first and that this is normal, it actually helps you build healthy self-esteem. And this is what allows you to get really good at learning, learning how to learn, embracing the suck. Ooh, this next one's important. Playing the long game. Yeah. Are you patient enough to keep showing up day after day, even though you're not going to get immediate results? What I'm discussing doesn't apply just to your training practice. It applies to all aspects of your life, which is why I always say that your training practice is a mirror for everything else that's going on in your life. So what do you want your training practice to look like? What do you want your life to look like? I'm going to say something important, so listen. Always do something, never nothing. Always something, never nothing. The solution is to take action. The moment you use words, you've lost. Why? Because words equal failure of action. So shut up and just go do something. There's always something that you can do that will help you make progress. And action taking is the cure to a shitty mood. Am I right or am I right? Cumulative action taking is the secret to a magnificent transformation. People always ask me, oh, well, what should I do first? It doesn't matter. Even if you take the wrong action, it will eventually lead you to the right action. So just take action. You'll learn as you go. We all make mistakes. The key is to learn from that and not repeat bad patterns. And you know what? You're going to answer a shit ton of questions you have just by taking action. A lot of people are scared to take action because they feel the need to gather as much information and data points as possible first. But what does this avoidance serve you? People always ask me, Sarah, how long is it going to take for my back pain to go away? How long will it take for me to be able to do the splits or a handstand? And guess what the answer is? If you're paying attention, you already know. As long as it takes. I can share some of my timeline with you if that helps you. So it took me two years of chipping away at my core training to finally overcome low back pain. It took me three years to overcome knee pain. It took me four years to learn how to do a strict ring muscle up. And I'm still working on fixing the scapular dyskinesia on the left side. But if you look at my before photo, you can see that I've made a shit ton of incredible progress with my left shoulder. You know, some things come easier for some people than other people. And we have to be really careful not to play the comparison game, death by comparison. And you know, if things came really easy to you, then they would mean absolutely nothing to you and no learning would take place. And never forget that it took me four years of failing at every attempt at my ring muscle up until I finally got it. The ring muscle up, sure, it's impressive, but what's more impressive is the person I became along the way. A challenge tackling machine, somebody who just doesn't quit, who doesn't give up, even if they fail repeatedly year after year after year. That's who I am as a person. It took me five years before I was able to lap and carry the 160 pound sandbag. I had to start with 60 pounds, then 80, then 100, then 130. Rome wasn't built in a day. It is never too late to get started. I am almost 45 years old. And 2022 Sarah is so grateful that 2017 Sarah made the decision to get this transformation party started. I knew I was ready to start my transformation five years ago because I hit rock bottom. And that's typically what happens when people realize, oh shit, this is not the way I want to live my life. There's got to be better. 
And that's what usually starts a transformation. And if you're not ready, everything that's being said, it just falls on deaf ears. So if you're ready, I would love to be part of your transformation journey, not just with movement, but also with mindset. And if you really do want to work with me one-on-one, then look into the Strength Academy membership program. And if you don't want to do the monthly commitment, then that's why I've released the separate programs. They're one-time purchases that you get lifetime access to. If I could give some advice to younger Sarah, as well as to people who, who email me, it's not just one thing causing the problem, it's multifactorial. And it wasn't just like one exercise or one thing I did that solved all my problems and morphed me into 2022 Sarah. It's really the cumulative effect of doing the right things on a daily basis and not just doing random things, hoping for an accidental outcome, but getting more focused. Yeah, but Sarah, tell us what really made a difference for you on your journey. Definitely the mindset training because things that don't happen instantly for you literally boil down to your mindset. So mindset training. And that's such an important part of my Strength Academy program. Savage core strengthening, strengthening the daylights out of your TVA, your deep core muscle. This is your body's primary stabilizer. So if it is properly engaging and it's strong, then that right there is going to be the ticket to much better movement patterns. It's the ticket to improving mobility as well as the prerequisite. And then my other advice is Success lies in what you avoid. Success lies in the movement patterns you avoid. And one movement pattern that I gladly avoided for years was backbending. And it wasn't until I started backbending that a lot of my residual aches and pains finally went away. Backbending doesn't have to be scary and intimidating. And that's why I put together a backbending for a beginner's program just to help you improve your back line strength and your front line opening. Considering we spend so much time hunched over our phones or working at a desk or sitting in a car, it's important not to neglect the opposite movement pattern. So what conclusion can I come to five years later? Don't do that, it's weird. Mobility is the fountain of youth. If you wanna stay young, make sure you have control of your body parts through full range of motion. Thanks for watching this vlog all the way to the end. I love it when you do that. It means a lot to me. And thank you for subscribing. And please do interact with me in the comments below. Ask me your questions and let me know what topics you would like me to address in the future.